<laughs> Thank you, Capacity Crowd. Well done. Well done. Don't wear yourselves out too quickly because there's a lot to come tonight. <laughs> Welcome to this week's edition of Life's a Pitch TV. I'm Mark Murphy. If you're watching on YouTube, hello. If you're listening on podcast, hello as well. Let me introduce you to the team. Terry Butch is here. Yay! Russell Osmond's over there. Yay! And Phil Ham's over there. Yay! Richard's on technicals. Leslie's our floor manager. And you are our capacity crowd. Yay! Well done. Uh, massive thank you to uh, those that help us make the show. Our main sponsor is DPS Tech. Uh, also, big thanks to All About Hearing, marketing company Ginger Pickle, Forward Floors, Come Hither Design, The Hudson Group, Sound 4 Pro Audio, Venue 16, Fred Olsen Logistics, John Keeble Cars in Bramford, and now The Dove in Ipswich as well. <laughs> Uh, sponsoring Life's a Pitch at TV. I don't think there's anything left, boys, to sponsor, is there? I'm uh, sure we can find something. Right? <laughs> how, about, how about the sofa? Oh, the sofa? Yes, we could, yeah. yeah we sofa. could get some signage along the front here. I'm sure we could, Yeah, I'm we? sure we could. Very yeah. good. What we have is a gap, though. We need our special guest this week. Please make some noise for a former ball boy at Ipswich Town. He's gone on to great things. Former world darts champion, massive town fan. It's only Keith Della! <laughs> Great to see you, Keith. Welcome to the show, my friend. Um, so, wow, you've been a, a fan since you were a little boy of town then. That's right. I'm a Chantry boy, Chantry Estate. Um, very lucky that uh, at them days we had some, you know, brilliant teams. And uh, I think I was one of the lucky ones that was spoiled, you know, watching, obviously, Terry and Russell. And, and then a few years before, we had some bad times. But now we're back and we're going to keep going. Yeah, we certainly are. Come on, that deserves a round of applause. They need warming up a little bit, don't they, I think, tonight? <laughs> Definitely. Uh, we've got lots to talk about this evening. Uh, and you've a huge history with Ipswich Town over, over time. We've got your darts to talk about and everything as well. Um, so we really look forward to having you as a guest tonight. Um, how are you at Keep Me Up East, Keith? Oh, my God. <laughs> Um, Did we mention this to you? Has anyone got zero yet? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely get one. I know okay, that. All right. I'll get one. You're going to be a sport later on, are you? No, I'll go oh, for it. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, so let's talk, first of all, about um, Ipswich Town at the moment, because we did have um, a game called off um, the other day, and that was extremely frustrating on Friday, Phil Ham for lots and lots of fans, wasn't it? The away game to Rotherham. I know, you know the flooding here was bad, uh, but maybe that could have been called off a little bit earlier. A lot of travelling fans up there. Yeah, well, there's a lot of fans who couldn't travel, of course, because the coaches didn't even make it from, I think, Mendlesham to, to Portman Road to, to take fans to, to Rotherham. Um, so I think actually had a bit of a lucky escape. I made it as far as Kettering um, before I heard that it was uh, it was called off, and I know other reporters. So, but clearly, a lot of people were already there because they left early because they thought it was going to it was going to be a very trying journey. But as you say, um, it was an interesting situation that the pitch was fine. Uh, but, of course, the, the river burst its banks. But you would have thought the authorities would have realised that, given the, the, the sort of level of flooding, that the river would burst its banks. And um, they probably should have called it off in the morning to save those of us who made the trip, making half a trip, as we did. How, how far did you get? Kettering. Right. right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite nice. Yeah. Lovely. Um, Anybody else been to Kettering? <laughs> no, no. Not a place necessarily to go to, <laughs> no, is it really? No. Um <laughs> got nothing to do, just have a little drive yeah, up yeah, there. Yeah, drive to Kettering yeah. and back. Sail the boat. Yeah. And um yeah, well I yes, I've, well, we had one a couple of years ago, didn't we, which was uh, postponed at um at Shrewsbury and literally walked in the in the door, in the kind of in, on, through the concourse and one of the stewards said, I reckon you ought to turn around, mate. They're, they're just calling it off. So it was literally a case of turning up. And just driving straight back home again. So that's a shame. It's been a few of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a real yeah. shame. I'm only glad it wasn't me. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. do think sometimes they say, you know, for the supporters' <laughs> safety, you know, the pitch is perfectly playable, and they're worried about the safety <laughs> the supporters getting there. Surely most supporters are old enough and capable enough of looking after themselves going to a game of football. They might have drowned, though. That's the problem on Saturday, on Friday. But that's of their own choice. <laughs> I think the issue on Friday was the fact that one side of the kind of entrances to the ground, you know, the, the sort of the roads around the ground were underwater, and so it was it made it all but impossible, really. But, um, yeah. but I know what you but mean. But they do so use it re regularly. If they call a game off through any sort of bad weather, too icy, the car park was a bit too icy. Oh. Mm, I think they do go over the top okay. sometimes they with these things. They do go a little bit. 
But well, I think in that case, I think they probably should have kind of realised. The, I mean, I don't think it's down to Rotherham United. I think it's down to the safety advisory group and, and people like that who kind of oversee these things to say to sort of realise that if it's going to rain all day very hard and rivers that are already kind of at the top level, that they're going to burst their banks. Yeah, I'm sure the club, rather than themselves as a club, wanted the game on as much as we did. They did, because they were oh, embarrassed, so, weren't they? Because yeah. in March they had that game against Cardiff that was abandoned at half-time because it was... And, of course, they had loads of work done over the summer on their pitch, much like we did. And uh, so they were quite... They were sort of, you know, going on about how... Oh, yeah, pitch is fine. Absolutely fine. Unfortunately, the rest of the town was underwater. Does this ever happen in darts, Keith? Does this ever, is this a problem in darts or not? The it's been rained off? <laughs> yeah, Leaky you, roof somewhere, maybe? I don't no, know. No, the only way a, t- a darts tournament will be called off if the bar's not open on time. <laughs> 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 because uh, it normally opens about an hour before, unless you've got your own bar. But no, seriously. It'd be rioting. Um, the only way it could be, I mean, years ago we had the world semi-final, and that was Wingate when... Adrian Lewis, who I was managing at the time, he was in the World Semi-Final against James Wade. And the problem was, Ali Pally is such an old place that the first semi-final went to a tie-break. So the second semi-final, live on Sky Sports, the wind start coming in, and the guy that was supposed to close it had already gone home to bed. So <laughs> and that was a problem. And then... There's a wind in the crowd. Yeah, there was a lot of wind. <laughs> but James Wade um, was like, I don't know, four, one up. Winning you, easy. You, you were telling me about the, was it? Oh, you're over in America, and um, the air conditioning came on, and then your darts started to, to yeah. move. Well, it's the hotels we used to play in in Vegas. That'd be one of the hotels. Could be Venetian, and then in one of their function rooms, like big rooms, the air conditioning comes on, and your flight's just getting like that. And I was playing, and <laughs> I was playing in the final, the, the final as well. Yeah. That's against a great excuse. Alan that Keith. it's not great very good. Excuse. It's not very good when your flights go like that. Is no, it, it wasn't. Know? I'm afraid. I found that out to my cost as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get Jimmy but Anderson in. Jimmy Anderson. The... Well, Gary Anderson's right. He throws a bit harder, but uh, mine were like 18 gram darts. So 18 gram darts, and then that air conditioning come on. And I lost the final. I should have won. I made a big mistake, mind you, because we were playing a game called Tactics. So if you get three twi- three single 20s, and then it's your throw, you've got to get three to close that number. If not, I can score points. And unfortunately, it was Russ Bray, who was my best mate, was standing where I couldn't see it properly. And I've gone treble 19, treble 19, treble 19. I've gone, get in, all over. They were already closed, the numbers. And Russ went, zero. I went, What? And I lost the game then. <laughs> so oh. I still blame the win, but I blame Russ as well. Yeah. <laughs> blame the air see. conditioning in Las Vegas. <laughs> uh, time to take a look at the season uh, so far because uh, lots to talk about, uh, especially uh, the game down in Bristol this week, brought to you in association with the Dove in Ipswich. So, boys, uh, you watched the game last night? Yep, certainly yep, did. Yep. Good first half. S- slow start. Should have got more, maybe? It? Yeah, it was a slow start um, by town. And, you know, you sort of thought, well, Bristol are really up for this. And you could see you were saying earlier about the the boys looked a bit rusty and a little bit yeah unsure because the routine has been broken. You know, okay, you, you're footballers and you're primed to train and and, um, and play as well. But you know if you're not sharp, you haven't had the games then or all the training for it. Then you know you're you know a little bit rusty, a little bit a little bit tense. But they soon got into it, and when they got into it, you know they I thought they dominated the first half really apart from you know, one save from Clagg he had a uh, top, top right hand corner yeah. but I thought they dominated yeah they were good I thought we had some good performances last night um, especially in the first half again Cameron Burgess uh, you know playing your old role Terry there left side centre half I think he's doing a terrific job at the moment yeah he didn't score an own goal like I did but uh, <laughs> I thought for me I've got Broadhead or Burgess as man of the match and I, but I thought I thought Burgess didn't, didn't do anything wrong at all no, no, he's very good. Uh, Broadhead, again, if, if you turn the situation on its head with the, um, the Broadhead goal, you think it's such a great goal from uh, Ipswich Town's point of view, and if you look at it from the Bristol City point of view, you would be disappointed in how slow they were to actually realise what was going on on the edge of their 18-yard box. But, you know, while teams hesitate, we are good enough to capitalise on that and we've got some lads that can really finish really and we, well at the moment and we create so many chances don't we we do we are the way we play and the, the number of chances we create we are going to score one at some point be it Broadhead or Chaplin or so many players that are sharp around the penalty area 
Yeah, and then it, and then as the game goes, you you get into the like the last twenty minutes away from home, and unless you're a couple of goals clear, it's always going to be tough. And they're just showing they've got some uh, resolution there now, Terry, haven't they? Yeah, they have. I mean, they finished the game well, just like Southampton away as well. It was uh, not, not a comfortable victory because uh, Bristol City had to throw men at it. They had to throw the subs on. They had to go for it. And they certainly put town under pressure. But I thought they stood up very well, apart from the one instance when the ball went along the goal line. <laughs> and I think everybody mm. had their hearts in their mouth in and thinking, oh my goodness me, how can That's we... a good job there wasn't <laughs> Vegas air conditioning at that time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Swept yeah. the ball in. But good, the other thing, point. You, you had that spell where they had a number of chances, but then Kieran McKenna made a number of changes, didn't he? Brought on Don Ball and one or two others. Yeah. And actually, the last five minutes or so, we were very, very comfortable, I thought. We didn't yeah, yeah. really threaten at all. But he used three out of five subs, didn't he? Yeah. So, interesting... But again, we spoke uh, about something early on in the season. Um, how many chances did uh, Leif Davis have? Yeah. He gets in some great goal-scoring positions. And I said, if, if he can actually start converting one of those, one or two of those chances that he gets, then he could end up with I don't, 10 to a dozen goals this season. I don't think he scored this season. Has no, he? I don't think Leif he has. Davis? He scored a couple last time. Well, he got three everybody, last season. Everybody else has, but he hasn't scored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, well, on the other flank, of course, Brandon Williams has already scored two, hasn't he? So, yeah. Having, yeah. having only been yeah. here a match week. Watch this space. Keep backing yeah. it. Yeah. I thought, I thought defensively um, they were they were good. Midfield two dominated Longo and uh, Longo and uh, and Morsey. However, I thought Morsey was really lucky not to get a second yellow card in the game, yeah. just so outside the area. Yeah. Got to be careful. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he needs to be careful, but. Had that, had he got that yellow card, then he's off, and you, you never know what's going to happen. But got away with it. But I thought, and then up front, we we do create, and we talked about it last week, didn't we? With Eric Gates in behind the two strikers, because you, you you've seen that sort of tactic. But we have two men in behind the striker, not the strikers. Yeah. So it's and it works really well because how many times do the balls get slotted through to Broadhead and Chaplin, and obviously Harness and everybody else that plays that Hutchinson can play there. So it's that it's a system that is really successful, hard to play against, and and can be effective defensively and offensively as well. Mm. Yeah, and I, I think George Hurst is leading the line really well at the moment. A little bit like Mounter used to do, you know, the collision he had with the goalkeeper yeah. in the second half. He'd only got eyes for one thing, and that was the football. And I like Paul in his in his day. You know, he knew he was going to get smashed by the goalkeeper. But that wouldn't even break his stride. That wouldn't even <laughs> come into his mind getting hurt. Yeah. He would, I wonder he would, if he likes heavy metal people. and whiskey as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll ask him the next press conference. Yeah, ask him that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but in, at the, the after at the press conference afterwards, a lot of the national press were really wanted to talk about Nathan Broadhead because I think they'd not really seen a lot of him. But I think he he's get. I mean, he scored four in his last five. I think in for yeah. club and country, uh, and three in three in the championship. I think he's really kind of just sort of hit his straps now. I think he thought he started the season not slowly, but he, he was sort of drifting in and out of games. Whereas now he's more he's he's he's, he's hit another level. I what think. Did, what did Kieran say, Kieran McKenna? Ke oh, well, he, 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 he said he thinks he's got a long way to. Even That's though he's right. twenty five, he's a player that he, he he says he's still got a lot of development. Whereas a lot of other players might have had seven years under their belt at mm. this point in their career. He's he's still cut on his way through, and he thinks he's got a long way to go. He said, "I don't really know how far he can go." So I think he yeah. thinks. Uh, I uh, think in possession points. of the ball is very positive. He gets it, wants to go forward, wants to try and make something happen. Yeah. It's good. Keith, you watched it last night, did you, on the telly? Yes, the yeah. last five minutes. Hey, hey, keep having to watch the time, quick. <laughs> Nine, 89 minutes, come on. How many minutes overtime or, yeah. or entry time or whatever you call it, added time? Six minutes. Yeah. You just keep watching it, don't you? 93, 94, <laughs> come on. Get it up the other end, but... Uh, my wife has to go upstairs and watch Murder, She Wrote or something like that, <laughs> you know, and uh, me and my daughter, we sit there and shout when I was a nightmare, I am. I jump all over the place, but... Uh, you know, it's just a, we're just on such a great. It's great line. times, isn't it? And we just need to enjoy it. What you know, hopefully it's going to last a very long time. But we just need to enjoy it and go for the ride, don't we? Well, why can't it keep going? Yeah. I mean, there's no always teams not. who get on a good run. Doesn't matter what sport, winning becomes a habit, and so so does losing. Yeah. So at the moment, it'd be nice. I mean, obviously you're looking at December. We've got is it Leeds, Leicester, Norwich? Sorry, yeah. oh Norwich a bit further down, isn't they? <laughs> Well, we've got two big teams and that um, pub team down the road, but uh, you know, but them three games. I mean, it's, local derbies are always going to be tough, but I mean that's three big games. But if we've got that gap, 
then as them out the way and move on again. Yeah, it's lovely looking at the table. I, I looked at one today <coughs> and they disappeared, Dan. I couldn't see them. They were so far down. So. Who's, yeah, who's that, we'll Mark? Have... Who's, who's that? Uh, 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 that pub team up the pub road. They're, the road. They're on the next yeah. page of CFAX, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. 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 We will have to start deflating the canary that's above my head fairly soon, yeah. I think. Yeah. They are actually 14 points behind us. I and, know. And we've got a game in hand as well. Yeah. Extraordinary. Yeah. But you but weren't going to mention that today, were you? No, I wasn't going to no, mention no, it. But, <laughs> but, but, but it's nine, really nice. But nine points ahead of Leeds to a third, which is yeah. extraordinary with a game in hand. Extraordinary at this stage. I mean, I thought Leeds were starting to look a little bit ominous with their... I think they won... Three in a row, and well, and four out of five. I think the only one they'd lost was Southampton, and then they went and lost last night to Stoke, didn't they? Yeah, so, good old Daniel. He's doing a great job again up there. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Did a great job. And the, did a great job with Norris, didn't he? Hey. Hey. Let's bring it. Go on, Keith. I actually did a corporate job near Norwich last week, Ooh. and the guy who booked <laughs> booked us, um, he's had two hundred pounds on Ipswich to do the double. Oh. against Norwich. Now, I'm afraid I can't even put Norwich in my accumulator because I can't have them needing them to win. They'll never go in my football accumulator. No. If, if they played a blind school, I still wouldn't put them in. <laughs> so it's like, um, you know, and it, I said I would never bet on it, uh, Norwich. I don't know how you can do it. But, yeah, uh, keep booing, by the way. I mean, it's, Don't worry, I get know. a lot of stick. Just look on Twitter. It's payback time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take you back, Keith. I think we've got a, a, a photograph of you up on our screen behind us. should pop up in a moment or two. As, uh, uh, as uh, a Chantry boy, you obviously uh, spent a bit of time with uh, Kevin Beattie. That's right. Well, Chantry, um, Bunton Road, just a road across the road, was the Ipswich Townhouse. I mean, going back in the days, I was saying to Terry... Um, we had uh, Mick Hill, and then it was David Best, the goalkeeper, and then Kevin had the house. So a few times he'd give me a lift down to the ground and got to know Kevin really well. And I used to go and see him, and his knee would come up after a, after a game. And, you know, and then he was going through some, you know, really bad times. And um, in 83, he said to me, he said, I'm, I'm selling my FA Cup medal, you know, because times weren't good. So I said, well, I'll buy it off you because I didn't want anybody else to have it. So I think I paid something like 20 pounds and I put it in my drawer in Enfield Town for about seven months. And I thought, you know, and then he got on his feet um, and, um, and he said, how much did you get for that? I went, I weren't going anywhere. It was only one place that was going back to you because I was there in 78. Sadly, I didn't go to the 81 because I didn't have any money, but uh, I went to the cup final and um, and Kevin, to me, he just, I mean, well, you, you two know a lot better than I do, but... They all say he would have got 100 England caps. I mean, I watched the documentary on um, like uh, Sir Bobby Charlton, the late Bobby Charlton, and they were saying about Duncan Edwards, and they were saying Kevin was as good as Duncan Edwards. And I just think that he was a great guy, an unbelievable footballer. And uh, I remember once, uh, I was a boy, um, that was a, U a UEFA Cup match, and he banged on the away door, you're so-and-so getting it. And I thought, do, you do it now, you'd be in trouble. But <laughs> honestly, he, he, he's, he was fantastic. How much of that kind of thing went on, Butch? Because you're quite famous for um, kicking dressing room doors and the like, aren't you? Was there, was there a bit of gamesmanship before matches? <laughs> no, never. <laughs> <laughs> No, I've yeah, heard it said that seventy eight was kind of one or, or, um matches you, you just you've won matches in the tunnel just by kind of intimidating the opposition. Sometimes. <coughs> yeah. More often than not. But it was great fun, wasn't it? Yeah, it really you know, there's one or two <laughs> other teams that fancy themselves as well in the tunnel, but you know, we we could hold our own, couldn't we? <laughs> we could yeah. hold our own in the tunnel, in the players' lounge afterwards and on the pitch. So when you when you had the beat with you and Mariner as well. Well, you were, that was fine. Yeah. It was great. If it, if it turned, if it there turned there well. into a scrap with a bit of Big Al, yeah. yeah. If it turned into a scrap, you're happy with that. Yeah. But you obviously knew Beat as well as being a footballer, as someone who was a you know living on Chantry as, as well. Um, very sociable. Always time for people. Or, you know, liked his beer, which we all know. But but a thoroughly nice guy, actually. He was. But you know, I just think we we had one of the greatest footballers I think England easy I mean I always remember his goal for England against Scotland one at the header and uh, but he was well, just I mean when David Beckham got the goal from the halfway line Kevin did that against Leeds that was on the halfway line so Beckham we wasn't the first one really to do it <laughs> Kevin did you, done it did you see the the free kick in the UEFA Cup against uh, Bohemians when he hit that free kick came on as a sub oh well, yeah Portman Road and Portman Road yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, hit yeah. that free kick and it was a good job there was a net because it would have killed the about ten in the crowd when they went through. <laughs> Kevin Kevin came with us um, on an end of season trip one year. 
he'd been injured during the season and they thought be a good idea get a bit of sun and he came away with the youth team and we went to Louette de Mar <laughs> and Kevin was there to act as kit man but just to have a good time what a good example he was to the rest of the under <laughs> 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 Oh, my yeah, he God. He, try, he tried to jump out of a window, didn't he? He, tried to, he was in the room next door, but he decided to go out through the window and jump onto the balcony of his room, which was about 10 foot away, and we were three floors up. And he, he had a few beers, of course. Just he, I mean, he had a few beers turned him into Superman, and he thought he could do it. <laughs> but we, we said, no, no, you can't do it. We're screaming at him, you can't do it, you can't do it. He tried and hold him back, and once his mind was made up, that was it. And we we were like this. We did look, and he jumped. He jumped it. He jumped it. Cleared it easy. No problems at all. <laughs> Night, boys. Off he went, and we were like, oh, like this. <laughs> oh, we're like, oh my god, what got relief. away with that. What well, got away with that? Um, you were a ball boy. I think we've got a picture of you as uh, as a ball boy coming up in a moment or two. Cool. Um, but this is a picture of you with some of the team from. 81 there, there's uh, there's Maras, Brazil, France, uh, I think Russell down in the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that yeah. Soccer Russell 6 or something like, like that? Jeans that. On. Sorry? Is that Soccer 6 or something like that? I think it must have been a six-a-side tournament that, that we won somewhere down the line. <laughs> no, that's, um, that was um, obviously when I won it, just to take it on the... I mean, well, the trophy actually... So it was 83 you won, wasn't 83 it? 83, yeah. and the, the trophy was in Croydon, the jewellers in the town centre for about three months, but before that... Uh, I was asked to take it on the pitch. I couldn't wait, you know. So you always want everyone wanted to be a footballer. I mean, I'm. I mean, I'd watch the booty of it. it was on TV. So, but uh, and that game, I think, um, I think you won about four nil because it was about twenty to three. And I was in Paul Mar and I said, "Oh, I better go now." Paul went, "I will beat these. They're rubbish." <laughs> you know, and it was just what it, what it was like. And um, and when I took the round the pitch, even the away fans were cheering me because obviously <laughs> they weren't liking Eric too much. So uh, I had a lot of support. But to go on the pitch like that, oh, it's just a dream, isn't it? Take take us through the, the the winning of that World Championship title because I can remember it, and I was so pleased that a, a you know a boy from Chantry, no no disrespect to Chantry, uh, but a boy from Chantry was up here, you know, winning winning the World Darts title. It was incredible. We just were like gobsmacked, you know. It's right. I mean, it was just uh, I was really confident because I'd won the Los Angeles Open and I'd, I'd beat John Lowe, Bob Anderson, Bobby George. So I was going to the tournament really well. I had to go to London for playoffs and I had to play a guy from Spain to first round. Well, there wasn't any dartboards in Spain, so that was 9-0. <laughs> and then I had a guy called Len Hurd from America who was really good dart player and I beat him 9-1. And then I had the Scotland number two and to get through, and I beat him 9 0, so I was going into it really full of confidence. And I always remember that I had to play, well, Eric's father, George, every time I was playing, he'd come in 15 minutes before and he'd say, How'd you feel, Keith? I went, Well, I'm beating. I put the number seven, Nicky Vrashko, I was working in a pub in Whetstone, and they all come in the year before. And he couldn't knock me off the board. And I thought, well, that's it. And he just went out of the way. So then he would come in the next round. And then I had John Lowe in the court. As he went, how do you feel? I went, this is where the big seed's going. Bye-bye. And it carried on. Then it was um, Jockey in the semis. And then Eric in the final. And I realised uh, afterwards, Eric told me that his dad was betting on me all the time. <laughs> so he said, you never got, you couldn't get better. He said, every time I went in there, he was just so confident. But you've got to be confident. I mean, I just thought, I got when I played Eric in the final. When we got to the semis, um, if I reached the, fi um, the final, then we were doing three sets in grandstand because grandstand and world of sport were the two big programs. So we had to do, um, and it was weird because that was at two thirty, and then you had to carry on doing the final at quarter to seven, I think it was, or quarter to six. But yeah, quarter to six. And I thought, right, two one either way, it's game on. Three nil either way, it's game over. And I was two sets up, and then Eric had a brilliant third set. And then we had the break, and I thought, I'm happy with that. And then I said to Terry O'Day and John Lowe that were in the studio, I said, I'll win 6-3. He won't get four sets. And I had seven darts at the double to win 6-3. And I always remember, I was 64, I went 16-16, hit double seven right in the corner. I went back, and I could see me, my lip was going... <laughs> <laughs> But I had time because I knew I was world champion. And then I missed. And then I put three on the wire. He then won that set and uh, laughed. He went to the, ah, like this. And then the next set, I lost 3 nil. My head had gone. So it was five sets all. And I then lost the first leg when it was my throw. And it, 
I was in trouble then. I don't know why. I just said to myself, you ain't done this for nothing. And then I think I went 12, 15, 12, which was like averaging about 110. And then we got to the uh, the last leg. Eric left 121 after nine, and I left 138. And he went 17, treble 18, which he got the bullseye to make it two legs all, and he didn't go for it. And I went treble 20, treble 18, double 12, and won the world title. But so. did, he, did he think that because you'd missed early on to win it that you were you were rocking sort of thing so that's yeah. why he, he sort of played safe he thought the bottle was gone basically and uh, he was he, I mean, he was called the crafty cockney but by doing that he was the dafty cockney really wasn't he well he was it was a <laughs> i've worked i've worked hard on that you're right, on right. fire tonight right. Butch. but i actually um <laughs> i actually played him at the ipswich uh, corn exchange three months later and we'd done the same final again and uh same format and it was five sets all, one leg all, and I went 138 again, and he went, you so-and-so. <laughs> and then when we were in, he was in Tenerife, a bus came round. It was 138 on the bus. He went, I'll get the next one. He wouldn't get on it. <laughs> so it's, it's weird, but he, he, the only thing he said to me, they said, what did he say when you won? He said, enjoy the trophy, because it's mine again next year. <laughs> and it was. He won the next three years. <laughs> <laughs> but your, your life must have changed, because you weren't terribly well-known, were you, at, at, at that point? I was to the dark players, but not to the public. Yeah. I mean, the the, the the betting shop at the Chantry Estate, I think I was 100 to 1, and they were all putting £10 on. So they lost about 25,000, which... Did the beat put £10 on? I don't know. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it was just... I mean, I was borrowing money off the officials in that week. I had no money. I didn't have a job. Um, won the tournament, and three months later, I was buying a house in London with a swimming pool. And that's, that was the difference. But the media side of it, I mean, that must have been quite a shock to the system. Well, it was hard because it was all the TV tournaments. You know, sorry, all the um, press and, and then going on TV shows, which I really wasn't comfortable, to be honest. And the problem is I wanted to play darts again because I wanted to win the next tournament. And I actually did win the next one. Um, that was the Double Diamond Masters. The final was on World of Sport. And it's just full of confidence because... You have to go through different areas, and I did go through London, which was the hardest one. It's re I mean, it was like winning the tournament. And I was doing, an, I just signed a big brewery deal, and I had an interview with Alan Parry in Leicester, the commentator. And I got to London about quarter to seven, and I was on at seven o'clock, and I dropped one leg all night and didn't hardly have a drink, just absolutely blitzed it. And then Eric was in the semis. Uh, and I was in the semis. I had a guy called Timothy Gould, and he had Mike Gregory, who was an up-and-coming, I think he was provisionally five in the world at the time. And I had a good draw, because I just signed a contract, and the draw come my way. <laughs> we don't want to say nothing else, but... Uh, and then... Um, <laughs> oh, it was just very right, handy, huh? that was. <laughs> and then I, Eric got beat, and that day, they have the Nations Cup, which is three-man team, and that's on TV in the afternoon, but you don't get any money. So I won the £3,000, which it was then, and uh, and the trophy. And as I walked past Eric, John Lowe, and Cliff Lazarenko, and I said, I'm never going to watch you while you play for nothing. See you later, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't like it. <laughs> Is it right that double diamond works wonders? Oh, it did. Oh, yeah. It did, did that it? year. <laughs> so would, you, would you have a drink? Would you be drinking or in between? Because darts players were in and I don't know if they do now. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. They, they all, they all drink. Don't worry about that. I mean, it's different now because... I mean, darts has come from a pub. You know, you, you've played, everyone's played at a game of darts, there's a dart ball there, you don't have to be any good. You'll have a go, have a throw. And that's what it was. But in our day, you know, I mean, I've never smoked, but, you know, you've got the drinking and smoking. And that really did push everything back. Because the only time I think we really got appreciation properly was when Phil Taylor came on board, the way he was winning everything. But, yeah, there is drink. But the thing is, it's, you can't have too much to drink because, it's. Not, I mean, I always say, if you had three pints in a pub, the third one, you'd start to feel it. But if you're playing in a darts tournament, the adrenaline, you haven't even had one. And it's, it's just getting... Jockey was the hardest one to get it right. <laughs> I mean, Jockey would really struggle. I mean, he would, he would drink a bottle of vodka and uh, that was all right. So you just try to get him a few more in him. So you just get him over the edge. But, <laughs> you know, I mean, Eric Bristow, we had a tournament in Japan and Eric, um, we, we were not allowed to drink. So we had to sort of stay in your hotel room and say, right, you're on in 10 minutes and you go down and play your match. And he was in the final against a guy called Russell Stewart. It was 29, I mean, this is 86, 29,000, 42,000 the winner. And I think it was like 18,000 runner up. Well, this guy, Russell Stewart, Aussie, used to drink, drink a lot. 
So what Eric did, he was sharing with Mike Gregory. He said, right, Mike. He said, go and get treble, Jack Daniels and Coke and get me a Coke. So he'd done that. Eric went, look, I'm just glad we're both in the final. Cheers. <laughs> he went, go and do it again. Go and do it again. So he'd done it about three times. Got to, are you ready to play? Russell Stewart went, what ball be on? <laughs> Eric went, that didn't cost too much, did it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he's always like, you had to watch Eric. He was a crafty so-and-so. But, you know, I mean, a lot of them do. I mean, um, big Cliff Lazarenko, he was a big lad. And he was playing a tournament in Ireland. And he knocked his head. Well, Cliff would, would like about 25 pints of strong road before he played. And he's still the same. And he knocked his head. I said, you better go to the hospital just to get a checkup. He went to the hospital and the doctor said, what happened? He said, well, I just uh, hit me head. He said, uh, have you had a, a much to drink? He went, no. He said, I've only had about 15 pints. <laughs> <laughs> he went, well, he said, no, I ain't got going yet. <laughs> but he, he never changed. He was, I always call him Norm from Cheers. You just always see him at the corner of a bar, like everyone knew Cliff. But no, it's just the, the culture, what it is. I think that's what we had in common, footballers and dance players we used to um, celebrate. But we didn't actually drink when we were playing, no. to be honest. <laughs> although, there, although some of us tried. That must be a few. Wasn't there a thing about milk as well with you? When well, the th what happened there was that um, after I... Because we had to play three sets in, in the afternoon. I didn't want to eat... I only had two pieces of toast for, for breakfast. So I thought, I don't want to eat nothing now because you start going lazy. So we finished the final about quarter to eight. And I went in the press room. There must have been about 100 people there. It was mad. And all of a sudden, my stomach was rumbling and getting empty. And they brought me a pint of beer. And I said, oh, God, no. I said, you couldn't get me a pint of milk, could you? I just needed something in me because that's a horrible feeling where you know you need to have some, something. And they all said, oh, the Milky Bar kid. But he wasn't a not very good-looking kid, was he? It wasn't a good start, <laughs> was it? You know? <laughs> but it's... Um, yeah, and that's how it came about. Like, we tried to get on the milk advert because there was a couple of footballers do it, a lot of bottled. Do you remember there was an advert, a milk advert? We tried to get on that, but it didn't happen. But, you know, it's it's just weird, isn't it? That the press soon stick. jumped on it. Yeah. But, oh, no. and it turned your life around, didn't it? Absolutely turned your life around. Well, it has really. I mean, because when you think now, it's 40 years ago and I'm still doing exhibitions. I'm still going around the world, still yeah. playing darts. Sat here now. Yeah, still yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> After another where, Ipswich victory. Where does, it, where does this rank then, Keith, amongst your highlights of your career? If we go up, it's going to be right up there. <laughs> Which I think we've got a great chance, you know. I'd, but I'm watching. But uh, I'm disappointed last week when the game was called off because I was doing a corporate job at Sheffield Wednesday Football Ground and Ipswich were two miles down the road. And I was just waiting for Sheffield Wednesday fans to come along. But, you know... I'm at West Brom in a couple of weeks, so that's their turn. They're next. <laughs> so you do fly the flag for town on social media and at your uh, events then, do you? Oh, God. If you see my Twitter, I've upset Bristol City fans today, Sheffield Wednesday fans today. Well, they keep saying, well, you're not that good. I thought, well, we keep winning. You don't. You're not that good either, are you? And then someone said, a Wednesday fan went, you'll still go down. I said, you're already down. What are you worried about? And then I get... Never rated you as a dark player. It all is, but the Norwich is my best ones. Oh, God, they're so easy. I know, but they are so easy to wind up. I did at um, Epic Studios. There was 900 people. There was Phil Taylor playing, um, real good names. And me and Eric Bristow had to play two games before everybody else, before they do a match play. 900. And the walk-on went like this. Wow. You never see so many Norwich shirts here for a start. And as they'd done the walk-on, he went, he's a tractor boy. Wow. <laughs> And as they were calling me so many bad names, I went, you've got no history, no history. <laughs> That's all I kept saying. Like, and Kevin Painter was there that night. Well, he's, Kevin should have never done what he did. He decides to play his game and then walk out and have a, have a um, chat with the crowd. 30 seconds later, a pint of lager straight in his face, oh which we thought was funny. You know, I didn't go out at all. I just stayed there. <laughs> You're right. They have no history, do they? No history. No, no history whatsoever. Um, I think uh, that's the way it should stay. The natural order is being restored. That's what I like to think it is. Look, I think we actually... Have we got the picture of um, um, Keith as a ball boy? Have we got that? No, we haven't got that, unfortunately. No. But you were, you, how did that come about? I think just... Um, my mum and dad must have sort of put it in there. Can you be? I mean, there's another uh, ball boy there. It was Colin Criderwolf, and he's always in the director's box. 
Robin uh, Carrado Wolf was a ball boy. Yeah, Comedy he, was, he was the one with the blonde hair, blonde headed yeah. one out the well, floor. I think, I think I've seen him at Ipswich. You know, he sits behind us in the, right. in the Premier Lounge, and yep. you know, he was he was a ball boy. He was the one in the blonde hair. Yeah, but then, but then, I mean, I I always when he came into the room, I thought he had a few match balls underneath his jersey. Oh, you know, so, <laughs> you know, but he's a lovely man, Colin. Uh, <laughs> I must say, he's a he man. is indeed. Yeah, so, what era? What era was, were you? Well, ball ball well I was. Born 59, so it'd been about 72, 71. So well, just as Beat was getting into the team then? Yeah, Kevin was in the team, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was a bit, it was brilliant. I mean, I had to clean George Best boots because at that time, if a, any of the players come in, even if it was the Ipswich lads, you had to clean the football boots. And I also got Mick Jones number 10 on the tags, on the socks. So, um, I mean, look, it's, football is your hero, isn't it? I mean, I just... I couldn't believe it, just sitting that close. The only time you didn't want to sit, place you didn't want to sit was two, really. The North Stand, the away end, because you've got Chris bags full of dirt whacking you on the head every two <laughs> seconds. And then the where the players come out, well, it was just Charles Ramsey. If a ball went over, the, before we got the high sta uh, um, stadium there, if the ball went over, you had to go and get it. So you thought, please don't kick it over. <laughs> Because you're going to miss a goal, you know? Well, you were lucky that the crisp packets were filled with just just dirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. well, I That's think they were dirt, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was the era when I went to my first game. It was Town versus Middlesbrough. And the old, my brother took me in the old North Stand. And, and I'd never been to a football match before. And it was segregated home and away. Yeah. And on the right-hand side were the home fans. And over the left-hand side the away fans and I stood there and there were darts flying across it wasn't you was it no I was, I'm not there that good at the time there were darts and coins <laughs> urine being thrown across oh, in buckets God. and things like that it was it was a pretty hostile atmosphere wasn't it so so you experienced that as a ball boy as well yeah because it's all dirt between the you know where, the, where they stand and you just oh God, another one's hit me <laughs> so you know but it was always London clubs or Liverpool Liverpool were bad but uh I always remember the gold Mick Mills FA Cup. It didn't even hit the net, did it? It just went over the line. I thought, yeah, go on, bye bye. But uh, no. Did you celebrate when you were a ball boy? When yeah. You scored? Oh, you did. Yeah, I, oh, you got to. You can't help it, can well, you? That's, that's why you were fair game then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's your fault, really. I tell you, yeah. or our fault because we scored a goal. Oh yeah, you can't let you got to, didn't you? I mean, I mean, I'm bad enough. I mean, I've just come back on in on holiday from um, Hawaii and Vegas, and my wife went. Right, I said, I've got to get, what's the time? 10 hour difference, right. I said, I'm getting up at six to put the alarm on because the Ipswich game's on. <laughs> Don't you wake me up? Well, I'm afraid I did because we scored. <laughs> Not happy, but then uh, then uh, we went to Vegas and then it, the time zone again. But uh, I watch them all, can't miss them. It's interesting, there's, there's, there's a, a lot of similarities between the sports, you know, when you're talking about um, performing well, winning, Ipswich were winning well at that time. You were winning. The Speedway were doing very well as well, weren't they, Ipswich Witches? So yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of kind of shared um, experiences together between the sports. Fabio Wardley, for instance, is a big town fan now, isn't he? Doing well with the boxing. Um, and it's nice to see the sports sort of mingling and there's that appreciation of, of, of each other, I think. Exactly. I mean, the Speedway have had a fantastic season. I mean, unlucky not to win the one against Sheffield, but I mean, it's just we all love our club, don't we? I think we've got a picture of, of Keith as the ball boy. There oh, we go. Oh, there he is. So that's yeah. Colin on the right, Colin Cridewolf. Colin top right. The blonde-haired lad. Yeah. Still got the same hair called Colin. He has, yeah. <laughs> wow. If he sat on the ball now, he'd probably burst it. But <laughs> <laughs> and those are the mushrooms. Yeah, Colin's a lovely guy. I wouldn't going. go on Saturday if I were you, no. <laughs> but no, it's no. Uh, brilliant. <laughs> look at those match balls, though, Mark. Yeah. I know. I'm looking also, the pitch doesn't look that great. Chaining either, balls, it? match balls, whatever. Yeah. I mean, they were like medicine balls in those days, weren't they? God. God. No wonder. <laughs> <laughs> you used to try and head those balls. God, yeah. dear. Scary. <laughs> Quite scary. But for a kid, I mean, that's what you want to be, ball boy. And we had to do the scores first. So you had to do your apprentice for a year. You put the scores up at half time. And they were a nightmare, they were. You know, but um, you had to look through a little hole, watch a game. But, um, and then once after, he, after the year, you get, oh, you're a ball boy next year. So you didn't have an electronic scoreboard in those no, days? No, they were definitely no. not electronic, no. 
<laughs> but uh, what was the score of that one? <laughs> so you got promoted. Promoted. To m- promoted to be a ball boy. That's right. Well yeah, done, Russell, yeah. yeah, that's what happened. Promotion and, um, Pullman Road. Do your apprentice first. But uh, yeah, Richard, our, Richard, our technician here, he's, he was a ball boy as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. We used to, we, we didn't, we can't say a word of abuse, but we used to, we used to have fun and games with, with the ball boys, we used to come in and kick a ball at them and all that sort of thing as well. Yeah. And there were many other things which I can't possibly describe. <laughs> I think it is, yeah. Funny enough, yeah. It's a great picture. I mean, it's a fantastic picture. It kind of sums up the era really well, doesn't it? It really does. It looks like the Bee Gees, doesn't it? Yeah. The Bee Gees, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> before. <laughs> before. <laughs> Gone <Yeah>. wrong. <laughs> fantastic. And, and that led to a lifelong uh, passion for, for Ipswich Town? Yeah, I only had my scarf taken once. But I got it back. It was a Leeds fan. As I come out of the Portman Road, give us your scarf. Because that's what, that's what you used to do. You try and used to get to people's scarves. And he tried to grab it off me. I got hit, but didn't get it. No, that's my scarf. But no, it's just, it's what it is. I mean, that's your club. And, you know, if it's good or bad, you just you just got to keep supporting the, you your indeed. team. But yeah. now we're, we're in good times. Let's hope we keep it. Did you wear tan shirts when you were playing darts? No, well, you did you have your space? Did you? Well, you had had the sponsors on there as well, didn't you? But yeah, you're not allowed to wear football shirts, no. or you're not even allowed to wear football shirts to go to watch the darts. But um, when I go on holiday, they're always on, and I always put it on Twitter. Ipswich Town on tour. I mean, I was at you know the Boston Red Sox. The actual um, uh, road is called Ipswich. So when we were there, because anyway, we had a look round, which is boring. But um, <laughs> we got there. I went, hold on, Ipswich, quick, get the camera out. <laughs> But it's, yeah, you're not allowed, but no football shirts. No. But I do wear them like um, TV events, like a couple of weeks' time. Go down to breakfast. Oh, God, here he comes. <laughs> <You know. laughs> well, it's good to see you flying the flag like that. And and you're fit and healthy, doing okay? It's not, All good, you're yeah. You're not carrying any injuries or anything? No, no injuries. No, no that's no, good I'm, news. I've been pretty good. Um, that's good news, Keith, yeah. because uh, it is time oh, for our Keep It Up <laughs> Challenge, oh, sponsored by Ginger Pickle. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, nah. here we go. So here we go. Look, we've got we've actually got a ball for you, Keith. Okay, this is the one this is the one to uh to use. So it's a proper Ipswich Town football. So if you'd like to go over into our performance area over there. Can I just show you my volley years ago? <laughs> Get over in the corner there. Mind mind all the screens. We're a bit worried about the screens. What's my beer? Uh, so you've got 60 seconds to, to keep, do as many keep me uppies as you possibly can. Okay, so there's the leaderboard. Okay, so Terry's got three, but you got to beat that. Easy. You got to beat that. So Terry's gonna um, Terry's gonna keep time, and Phil, you've got the whistle. Okay, are we ready to keep score, capacity crowd? Yep. So come forward, keep, keep the score, because I think this is going to be a big one. It's going to be 180! <laughs> Here we go. Are you ready? Oh, he's equal Terry Butcher! <laughs> so that's it. That's it. That's it. That was it. it. That's it. No, that's no, it. no, no, no. Three, four. No, it's too late. No, it's too late. Come on, Keith. Give him a round of applause, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well done. You are on the leaderboard, Keith. My last. Oh no! Well, no, 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 because some, some, some couldn't do it. No. Um, George, George didn't do it, did he? So uh, no. David Sheepshanks didn't so do it. So they got, they got a big fat zero. Yeah, big fat yeah. zero. Yeah. Who are Cole Skews? Three. No, I thought three. it was two, but let me know. Three? At least it was three. Well, it was two in a tackle. Don't argue it? with the crowd. <laughs> at, least at least I'm level with a world <laughs> champion. So that's quite happy. Yes, get in there. Get in there. You are both the strongest, strongest people keeping the rest of us up, uh, which is good. Uh, don't forget, if you are watching on YouTube, to subscribe and to like the page for us if you could. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe. Don't be frightened. Uh, it just helps us to uh, to keep the channel going. And don't forget, you can check out our website as well, lifesapitch.tv. We've got a big event coming up at the Willow Suite at Venue 16 on the 30th of November, raising money for Cancer Campaign in Suffolk and also the Ipswich Town X Players Association. Association. And also on lifesapitch.tv, you can buy your own mugs and T-shirts. And actually, if you look behind me, Ed is modelling. Here he is. Here he is. Go on, Ed. Where are you? There. Oh, look. 
There he is, modelling one of our shirts. And so is Ted Lasso over in the corner, look. <laughs> so you can get those from lifesapitch.tv. Uh, and we hope very much to see you on the 30th of no November. All got your tickets? Yay. Yes. Good. Excellent. Could do with a few more. Uh, we've got um, some special guests here today because um, we've got a big flag up here to uh, represent town fans supporting food banks. And they're collecting money again this weekend at Ipswich Town. So Charlie Nixon's here. Come on, Charlie. Come right up to the microphone. Give him a big round of applause. Hello. Good evening. Uh, great to see you, Charlie. Lovely retro shirt there. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank and you. Um, so, so how did this all come about? Because you started last season, didn't you? Yeah, we started January last season. Um, so Fan Support and Food Banks is a national network. Um, we're almost like an Ipswich branch of it. Um, it operates across about 56 clubs across the country. Started in Liverpool between um, Everton and, and Liverpool fans. Um, the idea at premise is hunger doesn't wear club colours. It doesn't matter what class, colour, creed, gender you are. Everyone's going to face poverty at some point, particularly when um, the cost of living crisis is so bad at the moment. So the idea is to... Put that put football rivalries aside and come together once a month, if not more regularly, if we can, um, and collect money for a, a good cause. And the cause is Find, isn't it? Yeah. So we work closely and we raise money for um, Find, the food bag in Ipswich. So all the money and all the food that's uh, raised on our collection days goes straight to Find. Yeah, and that really does go to people that really, really need it. Um, so, so you take monetary donations as well as food, do you? Yeah. Yeah. So. Mainly, um, you yeah, know, we like to collect food because it can it's tangible, tangible items. It can go directly to the people who need it. But money goes a long way as well. Um, money goes to upkeep of find their uh, resources. Uh, Maureen speaks to me regularly. Um, last month, she asked me if she could use the money to. She had a Sri Lanka family that's just moved to Ipswich. If she could buy the the kids uh, some refugees, the kids some toys and stuff. And yeah, absolutely. So that's all the stuff. It's to make sure that people in Ipswich who have experienced poverty. Uh, are comfortable and welcomed. So anybody coming to the match on Saturday can come and see you. Whereabouts will you be? Yeah, so we're in the fan zone and we're by the Bobby Robson statue. We're there every month and you can see on our Twitter um, when our collections are. We get 29,000 people a month now. Yeah, a, a match, sorry, you know, to Portman Road. If everyone bought a couple of quid, you know, everyone has a loose change pot in their house. If everyone emptied that out once a month and brought it to us. What change we you know, What difference can we make for our community? Because we love the town and we love the club and you know, football well, it's fans. Fantastic! What you're doing, absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So please dig deep if you're going to the match on on Saturday. Charlie, thanks for coming along. No worries. Uh, what do you think? First time on live pitch in the capacity crowd. Brilliant. I mean, I've been watching this since you started, and yeah, it's a dream come true to be here. It really oh, is. Wow. Thanks, thanks, Charlie. We like it. We like Charlie. <laughs> Thumbs up, Charlie. <laughs> You come again, Charlie. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Bless well you, done, Charlie. Thank Great you, and, and to your team as well, because I know you've got Cheers, others yeah. helping you too. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be looking out for you on Saturday. Morning. Brilliant. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you. you there, back at the ground on Saturday. Um, time for our Ipswich Town News in Brief, sponsored by John Keeble Cars of Bramford, with Phil Ham from TWTD.co.uk. <laughs> Forgot the hat. <laughs> you did, but we haven't forgot the hat um, because you were presented a hat the other week, weren't you? And um, and you looked a bit like with your blue shirt and your red hat. You looked a little bit like Paddington Bear, didn't you? Apparently so. Yeah. yeah. What a shame you forgot on the hat tonight. But we haven't forgotten that you look like Paddington Bear, <laughs> and we haven't forgotten that it was your birthday this week. Oh. Thank you very much. You can oh. do better than that. Come on. Oh. Oh. Oh, you've not got me a marmalade sandwich. To you. Oh, don't get carried away. Happy birthday to you. Happy, Happy birthday, dear Paddington. Paddington. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. And as, you're, as you've Thank got you a little much. library up there, you've got a couple of Beats books up I in have. front of yeah. you. Um, I think if we pass this along the line, and Russ, maybe you could give that to Phil. It's a little book of Paddington Bear uh, uh, that you can display. Is it first edition? Uh, no, it's not first edition. No, no. Not eBay yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you can pop that just up Thank on you your uh, it was actually on thing. your bar. I think it was actually published in Peru, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> it's darkest. Especially, especially for you. Uh, Thank you very much. That's most yeah, well, don't read it now. We're on the no. Carry oh, sorry, on. Like yeah, we're on the YouTube now, and on the podcast, so you can keep that. Uh, you have some news in brief for us. I have news in brief. Well, I think kind of the. I mean, obviously the, the big news is we're just fantastic, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> it's just extraordinary. But um, 
Wace Burns, uh, good news on him last night from Kieran McKenna at his press conference. Uh, the specialist uh, says surgery on his shoulder injury is looking less likely and could be back by the next international break, which is a, 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 a positive, isn't it? Because um, I think there was fears that he'd require surgery and be out for, for months. Um, but as someone was saying, that we don't seem to miss players at the moment because the squad's so strong. Um, last night we were sort of talking about who might come in for Wes Burns and I think a lot of people expected Amari Hutchinson to come in, but Caden Jackson came in instead and then we've got sort of other options. Marcus Harness, the squad is, is so strong. But having said that, I think Wes Burns coming back would be... Uh, would 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 add to that strength and 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 Freddie Labap the Dapo is probably back for Saturday with after his Achilles injury so that's another another positive and every match I think new records just keep being keep being achieved or keep kind of emerging or someone will post them on Twitter or a journalist will mention it you know that uh, yeah I think someone told me um, a guy Chris Rand told me the other day the sort of this is our best performance at this stage of the season in the second tier and the previous best was the 60-61 second division title winning season under Sir Alf Ramsey Do you know, I sometimes think people have got too much time on their hands yeah <laughs> don't I know, you I know, to work these things out this is extraordinary isn't it and, and, and the other record he told me was that I think only f- in the history of, um, yes, in the history of the second tier from 1882-83 season to the present campaign up to the 11th match, which is obviously uh, prior to yesterday, only 16 teams would have recorded more points than Town had after 11 games, taking it as three points for a win, yeah. Which is remarkable, really, isn't it? When you think you're going back 100 and... 50 years or whatever so um, I think well that's, we'll all remember that stat uh, yeah, yeah I'm sure you will yeah, yeah. yeah. but I mean you know we've 31 <laughs> points now the same as we had in in 2018-19 in the entire season and we've done it by before the end of October extraordinary and the stat that was going around last night was first promoted team in any of the top four divisions to start a season with 10 wins in their opening 12 matches and also the fastest promoted side to, to get te- uh, 10 wins in a season Remarkable, really. Uh, away unbeaten league record up to 15. We've won 26 of our last 30 matches, if you include the Reading game, which we won on penalties. Remarkable, really. And every match, someone puts one of these stats to Kieran McKenna and he says, oh, you know, we, we're not really bothered by that. It's the sort of thing you, you look back on in your dotage and whatever. But, it, you know, it makes for a good copy and two minutes of news in brief. Um, <laughs> and the, Fills yeah, a gap, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, and uh, the third kit was released last night based oh, on... Aha. Uh-huh. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. We have one here. We have one here. We have one. James, come up to the microphone, James. James. Ah. As as modelled by James. Well done, James. Give us a twirl. Very good. Just step up to that microphone. Come right up close. Come right up close. Closer, closer, closer. Uh, So you you went to the ground and got this today? Yeah, lunchtime today. Yeah, and just nipped down to the ground. Big queues or was it okay? No, no, no. It was busy. Lots of um, kids there, you know, being half term. Yeah. yeah, no, it's quite quite easy to get a shirt today. So yeah, well, you know, do, we, do we they didn't... not have your size in at all? <laughs> well, this is a kid's size. Oh, so kid's size. Kid's yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't need Wes Burns to model it when we've got uh, James to model it. What do you think of it, boys? Brilliant, Love very it. good, brilliant. Love it. Yeah, but it really is based good. on the kit that you wore, isn't it? In eighty one, eighty two. Yeah, yeah. it. Um, apart from the bit that goes across the middle, what do we have? Pioneer. Was yeah. It in those days. Yeah. Yeah, it was Pioneer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but great. I think the badge looks fantastic. I think it's a great. Great kit. Yeah, because the badge is retro, isn't it? With the yellow around the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah really good. Really Which I think good. is much the better badge, don't we think? Mm-hmm. What we do you think? The, we Did we like it? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 We had the choice of white shorts, though, at times. Right. And white socks, so I'm not sure what's the combination. So it's white top, black shorts. Yeah, that's, that's what white or black socks. White, white socks. White socks. White socks with the black yeah. t- back top on, topping on it. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's, it's Smart. very good. Yeah. Smart. It's almost as nice as our Life's a Pitch shirts, as modelled by Ted Lasso yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah. Ed Sheeran. <laughs> and and, and the plan, Town had the plan to um, at Rotherham. They were going to wear the, the kit at Rotherham and the players were going to walk out and then the first reveal was going to be them taking their, t- their track suits off and, that, and Sky were going to play ball, obviously, and sort of... Yeah. Uh, focus in on them and kind of, so, which was a really good idea, wasn't it? I think, and uh, it's a shame that the game was called off. But um, yeah, I think they'll, uh, I think they'll do well. Perhaps not as well as the the black kit last year, which I think kind of was uh, something special. I think that kind of was was the Ed Sheeran connection, obviously, kind of um, helped on that as well but I, I still think they'll do quite well I think that would be a good kit to wear if you're going on holiday somewhere yes you know, in the it's sun a, it's a holiday kit yeah sort of for leisure wear yeah. I get you yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I think they did. We have one game in it. One game. We played two, I think, in the we end, didn't two. we? We played Derby, was it? And mm. that's not. It's for me. It's not a match shirt at all. That's a casual shirt. The black but one. Not, yeah, yeah, the but black then one. Yeah. James, James's shirt, the new shirt with the rounded collar. I prefer rounded collars and actual collars. But um, how did you feel as players when kind of you know they gave you kits? Were you not that bothered generally, or things like collars? <laughs> well, we were Adidas, so most of the Adidas kits were good anyway, weren't yeah. they? As long as it had a number. Between 1 and 11 on the back, we were <laughs> yeah, quite we're happy. Right. Yeah. If it had a higher number, like number 12, we were not happy at all. <laughs> and if you had to sit in a stand, we were fuming. Yeah. <laughs> so any shirt with an, any number on was good. Yeah. And don't swap them, whatever you do. No, no, don't swap them. Oh, no. Trevor, oh, Trevor like Curtin needs to go, man. Especially when there's three points next to it every Excellent. time. That's yeah, all we fantastic. need. You know, but, Brilliant. Uh, yeah, lovely kit. I mean, I like this. I like the blue. Oh, and at the moment, you know, it... it, it it doesn't matter what it looks like. We're all going to love it and going to buy it, aren't we? Because of the, the way the club's going at the moment, everything is just so positive and going forward. But that does look really smart. As long as we don't have a Man United grey, because oh, they never won a game, did they? Yeah. It was horrible, weren't it? <laughs> all yellow and green. Cannot have no any yellow and green near any shirts. I, tell you. I did say so. I do these corporate nights, and it's a company. You have to put ribbons, yellow and green, and uh, I said no. You're going to have to put them on. They went. So I get the trophy for them. Because I get, you know, a nice one for them. And then they put the ribbons on because it's their colours. I ain't putting them on. Sorry. Good man. No. Good man. I don't even like peas and sweet corn on the same plate together. I think that's exactly. so, yeah. so badly wrong. <laughs> no, 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 um, no. Was no, there no. anything else, Phil, or is, was that your news in brief? That's my news in brief. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we are going to go back in time, though, because uh, it's time for uh, Russ to take us back into Ipswich Town history, sponsored by Fred Olsen Logistics. <laughs> Our reading today, Mark, is taken from uh, <laughs> Thursday the 20th. 20... Well, it looks like you've got a white dog collar on there with a yeah. white shirt yeah. on underneath. It does a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. Reverend Osman. Yes, don't interrupt the Padre. You should know better. You got told off before from interrupting Patricia the other day. I did. Yes, yeah. you did. Yeah, behave. Um, yes, Thursday the 26th of October 1950. Bobby Bell, born on this day in Cambridge, was a centre-back signed by Bill McGarry as backup for town legend Bill Baxter. Bell, who played 37 games for Ipswich, never really established himself at Portman Road and had the dubious honour of being Norwich City's first loan signing. Well, there you go, Bobby Bell. So we Be bring the changes in. <laughs> also on Tuesday, the 26th of October, 1982, fullback Michael Mills, better known as Mickey or Skip or Captain or... Bomber. Or Bomber. Something yeah, else, bomber. Yeah. yeah, or something else. <laughs> Fullback Mickey Mills made his farewell 741st appearance in town colours as the Blues uh, crashed out of the League Cup second round 4 1 on aggregate at Anfield to Liverpool. And that is your readings for today from the 26th of October. Very good. Fantastic. Very yeah, good. what a great servant to the club Mick was. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Still is. Yeah. Still, Still is, is with the club. Norwich, Norwich, yeah. Norwich have got a book like that, but there's nothing written in it at all. <laughs> 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 and it's a big book as well. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Oh, love it. Uh, we're out of time, unfortunately. Oh. You can do better than that, can't you? Oh. We're out of time. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Keith, it's been great to reminisce with you today and uh, good luck with your travels and your uh, matches that you're still playing, those exhibition matches and everything. You still enjoying it? Still enjoying your darts, the arrows? Love it. I still like playing because, I mean, I'm nearly 64 now, so when I turn up, I've got one tomorrow night at Faversham Football Club. They think, oh, it shouldn't be too hard to beat now. But... Uh, Still nice to put some of these youngsters back in their place. So uh, it's getting we'll, harder, mind you. It's getting a lot harder. Gotcha. We'll but still uh, love you when you're 64, mate. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I just still love playing. That's the, um, the game that I love to play as a kid. And I still like playing. I mean, I practiced today for an hour. Six one eighties. That was not bad for me. So, and I got Russ Bray Just tomorrow. Just drop that in six one eighties. Well, I got Russ Bray refereeing tomorrow because they all want to hear one hundred and eighty from Russ. So I said, I got six here today in an hour. He went. Don't waste them, boy. The pressure's on tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Keith Deller, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Keith.
that is it, boys. Uh, we're looking forward to being back at Portman Road on Saturday, and I'm looking forward to being back Ray. at Portman Road on Saturday yeah, as well. Uh, really looking forward to that. Uh, we'll be back next week, and our special guest beamed in all the way from Canada next week will be Mr. Craig Forrest. Whoa. So it'll be great to hear what Craig's uh, up to these days. Uh, also, don't forget, check us out on our socials. That's Facebook, Instagram, and uh, X, all there for you. And lifesapitch.tv if you want to buy mugs or those lovely shirts as modelled by our special guest, Ted Lesso and uh, Ed Sheeran behind us. They're all on lifespitch.tv. Uh, tickets for our big show on the 30th of November, selling really well. So only a few left, so snap those up. Uh, that's it for today. Don't forget, watch us on YouTube. If you subscribe, that helps us like the page as well. And thank you to our sponsors, our main sponsor, DPS Tech, also supported by All About Hearing, marketing company Ginger Pickle, Forward Floors, Come Hither Design, The Hudson Group, Sound 4 Pro Audio, Fred Olsen Logistics, John John Keeble Cars in Bramford, and now the Dove in St. Helen Street in Ipswich. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Capacity Crowd. We'll see you next week. And up the town, everybody. Up the town. Up the town. <laughs>